Hey, it's Mitch from Swap Time. Today, let's talk about what you should do when you get an LAE3 or LAE6 complete pullout. This I got from a acquaintance on Facebook. This is a LAD3 eight speed. And this is 2014 or 15, possibly a 16. I'll show you how you can determine real quickly what, I call it generation, even though it's not really true, what generation of engine you have. Uh, 17 and up used a different fuel pressure sensor in the back and they also changed the computers so uh, 15, 14 15 or 16 ECU will not run a 17 18 or 19 engine so the most important thing to, to find out is what year time frame you have all right we're going to check out the fuel sensor here this is what's going to tell you what kind of generation engine you have. Right here I can see there are four wires going into that sensor. That tells me this is a 14 through 16 engine. This is very important to know. If this sensor, or, or, or I should say the sensor connector, has three wires, you have a 17 and newer. So this is all the information I require when I get a, a build request on a harness is I need to know what that sensor is 100% that way I can match everything up if not this thing will never fire next we'll look at some stuff back here down on the cylinder head let me see here it is right there is the VIN number it's pretty dirty that's pretty cool they etched that into the block so you can also type that VIN number and find out what this what it came out of what vehicle what year and this is this thing probably has some miles on it he didn't really tell me what mileage was um, honestly I don't care the mileage on this I'll be test fitting harnesses on this and I'll eventually play put this in a budget square body conversion and mileage doesn't bother me. Next part is I get asked, well, how do I know what transmission I have? So here's the first indicator of what we have. This is actually a thermostat for the transmission. These thermostats only came on eight speeds. And your lines go straight down a 6L80 the lines come out sideways. These go straight down. The next thing you can do is look at this. There's no bell housing here. There's no, I guess, it's not bolt-on bell housing. It's all seamless. And you see all these ribs for strength? Now if we look at a 6L80 you'll see that it has a separate bell housing that comes on and off. But from the top, it's really hard to tell what you got. The next indicator will be your transmission plug. The transmission plug has a big white or clear lever lock right here. And you have a bunch of wires running in there. Maybe 20 some wires. 6L80 will have about 9 wires with a all black connector and it's much smaller. Let's see if we can see it in this up. Then like the fourth sign is this tag. This tag does not really exist on a 6L80. This is the identification tag. It's actually a unique identification tag to this transmission. Um, GM uses it for programming and stuff like that. So that's another sign. The size of an AL90 is not much different than a 6L80. Maybe a half inch longer. I'm 
not sure what to go over here. Um, your mount folds are much more girthy than an LS motor. They put bigger bolts into the head. So that's a 13 mil. They usually don't break. Usually there's no issue on that, but these are pretty new. There's your vacuum pump, which can be deleted. You just remove it and put two block off plugs on the block to block the oil galleys. And this is always nice when you get a complete serpentine setup. Lost swaps, you can just leave it the way it is and save a lot of money. Here's your AC compressor. You got a connector here for your clutch. And a connector back here for your variable displacement. You can see the compressor that's held on to this alternator bracket. Be careful if you get aftermarket accessories. If you add a power steering pump up here, you might run into the issue of not being able to retain this AC compressor. I just ran into that. Get your starter here. That's all normal. This has the hydraulic mounts on it. Um, harness is toast, uh, which is fine. They, they just cut it off. Um, one issue I ran into is when these motors are slammed down into the crates and things like that, sometimes this bottom loom will get all smashed. And that has your crank sensor and cam sensor, so it can possibly break some vital wiring. So I, I try to inspect that, make sure the wires are, are good and not damaged. This is your fuel input right here from your fuel pump. This is a single line. This is pretty cool. Usually I don't get them with lines that are still completely attached like this. So what can happen, you could uh, possibly reflare this. Problem is, this is stainless steel. So my hydraulic crimpers do, do not enjoy doing that. So this might be something if you get all the fuel out um, you might be able to braise a couple of fittings on. And what's nice, this is stays connected to the transmission. You're not going to have any fuel issues. Um, this line right here, going up, that's your vapor line. And it goes to this sensor up here. And then this, of course, is your feed line. Um, other thing to check for when you get a buy an engine used, I'll open and try looking here. I, usually you can see a rocker. You can see how clean it is. I'm always looking for sludge, but that's usually only on the older engines, Gen 3s, tons of miles. These these run synthetic only oil, so they're usually mint. Pull the dipstick out, make sure there's no metal speckles on it. The filter's still on it and not damaged, pull the filter off. Pour the filter into a pan and make hopefully that oil comes out clean. Seeing speckles, you're hosed. Then of course, I always want to rotate the engine over, make sure it's not seized. But this is just a standard dropout engine you might get and things to look for. One last thing before I go, here's the T-case. I'm getting the T-case to work. I'll be testing this setup actually um, next week. So I'm using all like 2015 Chevrolet controls to make this work. So it'll be completely OEM. And you can keep your, your T-case on here for your 4x4 stuff. These things are strong. So this would be a bulletproof combo and you still pick these up pretty affordably and they drive great. The 8 speed is amazing with the 5.3. So I'm excited to eventually get an 8 speed in one of my setups. My Tahoe is next, pull out the 6 speed and throw in an 8 speed.
All right. Well, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.